Welcome to a very special episode of Greg's Garage. It's a happy episode and a sad episode. This is my last video in this garage. Uh, there will be a few that trickle out, but this will be the last one that I make here. We're moving, and uh, this garage that I started my YouTube career in back in 2007 is going to be owned by somebody else. It's kind of sad. It's kind of happy. I've worked with a lot of friends in this garage. I've made a lot of friends in this garage and I've worked with everybody out there in YouTube land. You've all helped me uh, be inspired. You've, you've helped me figure out problems and your positive comments and positive energy have kept me doing cool things in this garage. So I uh, just wanted to cover a few of the projects that I've done over the years and then a quick little garage tour. So we'll kind of do them both at the same time if that's okay with you guys. Strap in because it's gonna take a while. <laughs> Here we go. Everybody who's visited has always said, wow, your garage is a lot smaller in person than it looks on YouTube. It's a two-car garage. That's all it is. It's a little bit deeper than a normal two-car garage. I think it's maybe eight feet deeper. Um, but we're going to start here. This is my YouTube locker of fame. These are everybody who sent me stickers over the years. I love the stickers. You, it's like having you guys in the shop working with me. And... Uh, Unfortunately, there's a bunch of stickers on this side over here that we can't see because my locker, it, this side used to be exposed when the locker sat in a different spot. And uh, some of these guys are, are no longer with us. I see one right there. Oh, man. Um, but these are hot rod guys, woodworking guys, metalworking guys, uh, guitar guys in there as well. So I love you guys. You, you guys make everything I do in here number one possible and you inspire me and I love seeing your work as well. So that's the garage of love. This is the project that got me started on YouTube. It's a 1974 Carmen Ghia. I put, the videos are hard to watch guys so don't go scrolling all the way back. It was it was very ad hoc. I just had a little point and shoot camera and would record myself restoring this thing. This was a piece of junk when I started and literally a piece of junk. And I customized it and all the hot rodders on YouTube that subscribed helped me through it. And I love you guys to death. Um, all of the skills to restore an entire car were gained on YouTube and people on YouTube helped me out all the way from custom leather steering wheel, custom dash, you can see that. That is a stitch dash that I did. Uh, all these seat covers were me. Custom door panels, custom visors that I sewed. Everything just awesome. Uh, I painted the car here in the garage myself. The only thing I didn't do was build the engine and the engine was built by VW Darren who also has a YouTube channel. So uh, all started by Pete at South Southwest Rod and Custom. Pete is like the godfather of people restoring cars on YouTube. Uh, he connects us all. And I love you Pete and everybody else who helped me along the way. And there are literally hundreds of people. But I do want to take one other little break, talk about hot rodding stuff, and it's it's in here, but I'm going to show some guitar tools first. So Skyscraper Guitars is my other YouTube channel, and I'm making guitar tools on, on that channel. These are my fret rockers, and I've made a couple custom ones here uh, for a couple guys, and this one is for Paul Smith. He's a very famous guitar maker. Some of you may know him. A lot of people know his middle name, too, but uh, his company bought the first one that I made and uh, got uh, him and his, his lead designer, I met with them over the summer. And so I've got a couple thank you gifts here with engraved engraved fret rocker string height gauges. I've got a couple others that didn't meet quality control sitting over here. So got to work on those a little bit. I make uh, also some trem wedges. I sell a ton of these. If you have a floating tremolo Floyd Rose style uh, guitar, these will help you tremendously. And then I still do sell some Twisted Sharpies, so I have a bunch of those. But uh, this is my shipping central. I bought a laser label printer a while back because I ship at least an order a day. Uh, it's usually more than that, but um, I've been selling a lot of stuff. It's been really great. YouTube has helped me tremendously start that business and uh, it's been very, very fun. But uh, over here is the carb scoop off of my Uncle Gordy's 1954 Chevy truck. And uh, these are a special group of guys. Um, these are all hot rodders who came out and we pulled that truck apart and restored it, painted it, body worked it in a weekend. And these guys just gave their hearts and souls for, uh, 
for three days and just crushed it. It was amazing what these guys were able to accomplish. And uh, my uncle Gordy, whose truck it was, was not sick when when we did this restoration and the, the truck got sold. But my uncle Gordy passed away a year after um, after we did this. Everybody did this out of the kindness of their hearts. And I keep pointing to this. They restored an entire truck. Um, and they did it out of the goodness of their hearts. Uh, with wanting nothing in return and uh, it just turns out that it was the right thing to do at the right time and uh, my uncle Gordy passed away and before he did um, he gave this back to me and uh, yeah. now I'll take a look at some of the garage renovation project so I built a ton of shelves when I did that so this is my drill press stand uh, that also houses my planer in there so I just have to move the jointer out of the way and then the planer is a feed through where it sits a bench grinders on there and then a belt grinder as well hey I haven't shown this in any videos yet it's a Rikon bandsaw it's 19 inches of capacity I bought this so I could do single piece guitar bodies in one shot so what an awesome piece of equipment can't wait to put it into major production use I've used it for some small things and it is just a wonderful tool uh, got my jointer there yeah doing some repairs around the house before we sell it so the caulking gun is out this is another pair of set of shelves that I built in their garage renovation used some plasma cut skeletons there some sheet metal and uh, just made storage for all of my parts bins and the one thing I would say if you're gonna do a project like this most people build them out of wood I like steel but make a shelf out front that you can sit your parts bins on and open them up and dig through them then just some tub type storage for paints and other oddball tools that's my body working tools so all of my sanding blocks all my uh, body hammers things like that paint gun respirators all those kind of fun things uh, major stores of sandpaper <laughs> in here uh, that all is in there mm -hmm. stir sticks tape you name it anything dealing with uh, body related stuff on cars or guitars goes into that toolbox my hand tools are over here so uh, from <clears throat> just oh yeah it's just a mess of stuff pliers and paint brushes and hand tools to uh oh now I'm not gonna get it closed oh that sucks clamps so vice grips and all that kind of stuff and then uh, you know other odd tools that I don't use a ton usually tools go into toolboxes to die and never see the light of day again so I don't use it for that much other than you know big hand tools and clamps and stuff but uh, this is my guitar bench up here so all the guitar repairs that I do all the fabrication that I do all on board up here Peterson tuner over there guitar amp for testing and uh, this is a Crimson Guitars PRS kit with some rosewood accents that I'm working on so pick up surrounds um, truss rod cover backplate that sort of thing it's got some really cool inlays you can check out a video series on skyscraper guitars if you want to check out how I'm doing that I'm gonna get to refinish it for the third time I keep trying to paint it when it's too cold and I get these little runs uh, because I'm impatient and I try and layer it up too fast so got to strip this back down again repaint it I also make pick trays this is a p-base style I make flying V's and strats and SG's and a bunch of other styles pretty cool kind of fun mahogany with maple usually a figured maple top on them so just kind of cool little projects if you or cool little piece if you want a place for parts and picks and things like that uh, yeah neck rest neck workstation is what I call these you can put your tools in them so that your tools aren't down on your bench scratching your guitar as you move your guitar around so you can put your Allen wrenches in here you can put your screwdrivers back in there uh, this is another guitar I'm working on for a friend refinishing it it's a warmeth body warmeth neck telecaster and he finished it in true oil true oil looked great for about two or three months and then it started to die back so I've green filled it for him two-part green filler and then we're gonna tint it and then we're gonna clear coat it for him so it won't die back uh, some more guitar tools that I make these are sanding beams and they are precision hand lapped on a surface plate machinist surface plate uh, these are just dead flat like a ten thousandth of an inch uh, run out from end to end uh, there's a 16 a 12 and a 6 and then back there are some 20s it's expensive to anodize a 20 inch beam so I don't anodize those those are special order only then there's 
some prototype squares that Tom's tool room and I have been working on back there. More on those in just a second. Um, but this is a toolbox. Tommy Shu from Wild Eyed Northern Boy. That's a YouTube channel. He does body work on cars, hot rod and kind of stuff. Flipper cars, you name it. He restored a bunch of toolboxes and I was lucky enough to buy one of those toolboxes. This is insane. Metal flake, green is my favorite color. This is a Kennedy style toolbox. Just wicked, wicked pinstriping and everything else. I love this toolbox, but uh, this is all my art supplies, things like that. It used to sit on my table at work. I brought it home. Uh, it needed to be here, not there. <laughs> um, these are these are the finished squares. So uh, no longer prototype. I got a two inch, a four inch, and a six inch, and I've been working on the boxes for these. And so what what I've got is this foam piece and it's got holes in there so if you want to take the bottom blade off of each of these squares you can and then there's a place to store the screws and there's a place to store the blade itself and the thought is we're gonna sell these squares along with this piece of foam this will be the packaging it will be this into a cardboard box and then I've designed a box that they go into and if you buy the squares, you'll get the plans for the box and you can build your own box. So it's kind of cool. You get a project uh, to do along with the squares. So I always make two of everything. So if you've ever watched me build anything on my channel, chances are I've got two of them. And uh, in case I make a mistake, and also I generally give one away to somebody who asks for it. So um, this is already called for. <laughs> so anyway, uh, the idea is you can put that, cut that foam to size and put it into your box. And if you want to design your own box, you can. If you want to use my design, you absolutely can. So just got a few more things to do on those two boxes and they'll be done. This is the Izzy Swan DPT wrench, the drill powered through wrench. And this is the box I made for that project. And it's indexed holes for all of the through sockets. So that's what a through socket is. You can, you can tighten a nut on a fastener even if the fastener is a mile long. So just kind of a cool tool. And uh, anyway, I'm gonna wind up, I've got the CNC uh, file for doing all of this stuff. And by the way, there's a hidden wrench under there. So that's the wrench that comes with the Crescent kit. And it's just a hand socket wrench. So. I've got the file for that and I'm gonna wind up cutting these out of foam for anybody who wants them. Probably be like 10, 15 bucks, something like that. And then you can make your own box for the DPT wrench. I know he sold maybe like 100 of those, something like that. So if you got one and you want a foam insert for the Crescent uh, set of three wrenches, let me know. And I'll cut you out a foam one and we'll deal with it. So this is my Stanley number eight that I restored. I've got a video on that as well. I use this sucker all the time. What a wonderful tool. These old Stanley Bailey uh, planes are just wonderful. This is Tony Rouleau's infill block plane. I use this sucker like crazy and I over tightened the knob and broke the adhesive that holds the knob to the thread. And so I've got to back the threaded part out and re-glue this knob. Totally 100% my fault, Tony. Tony builds a fantastic tool and that's the spinner that Tony made and sent out for people who pre-ordered these way back when. I've also got a scribe. If anybody needs a scribe, look up Randy Richard in the shop, RR in the shop. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but he engraved his name there. These are a solid carbide scribe. What a beautiful tool that is. But I got that I, I got that in trade from Randy. I traded him two twisted Sharpies for, for that. I've also got a Tony Rouleau square. What a wonderful tool. Tony does some wonderful work. And uh, just kind of looking at the backstop here, we're gonna see a ton of outlets across the back of this thing. The orange one there is specifically for a welder, so it's a dedicated outlet that I plug my batteries into when I'm not welding. And uh, we'll look at some of that more when we get over that way. But uh, these are some YouTube garage gang. These are the hot rod guys that help me with the Carmen Ghia. I put my hammers up top there because I like to be able to just reach up and grab them. You know, I can just reach out, grab it, and then when I'm done, yeah, oh, yeah, that was, a, that was a little too much. Sorry about that. But uh, then I got some squares up on the walls there, impact sockets there, labeled nice and big. I only have metric impacts because that's all I seem to use. 
But then I've got my spanner wrenches and sockets there so that I can just easily grab them when I need them. That has been huge for me not having them in a drawer. Jimmy DeResta ice pick. Yeah, there it is. I got that from Jimmy. Whoa, come on, focus you. There we go. I got that when I was in New York visiting a shop. So uh, that was kind of a cool deal there. Socket wrenches, deep wells, metrics up there. Um, again, I just like to be able to grab my tools, air tools that I use all the time. They're just in a hole. I can just pull them out. Uh, hex, uh, Allen keys, Allen wrenches, soldering station, batteries. Yeah, you name it. My whisk brush right up there, right over the spot where I work so I can constantly sweep things off if I need to. And then uh, crescent wrenches, ratcheting spanners, tin snips, screwdrivers, flat blades on the right, Phillips on the left, weird ones in the middle. And then this was a rendering of the Carmen Ghia that I did before I had it built. This was my inspiration. I hung this up so that I would work hard so that I could have that car right there. And like, you know, if you, if you zoom into this sucker, maybe I can, you can see it's just Photoshopped. It was all Photoshopped. The color, the way I wanted the detail, um, everything was just Photoshopped. And uh, I wound up with that car. So if you need inspiration, post a picture. All my automotive paints are up there. A uh, handful of tools are up there as well. Some more stuff from YouTubers. Those are YouTube projects there. Got my airline in here. I use that obviously in combination with the air tools. This light switch cover plate was given to me by a fellow YouTuber named Milo, Milo's Garage. And uh, he was getting ready to open a dipping business. So all that crazy stuff where you, they dip parts into a tank and give them some kind of crazy pattern. That was a carbon fiber one right there. And uh, Milo passed away a couple years ago in December. And I really miss Milo. Milo is a fantastic guy. Um, very inspirational. Helped me on a very personal level um, in ways that nobody, nobody will probably ever understand. Um, some conversations that I had with him. He is just a wonderful man. And uh, I miss him, uh, you know. It stinks when you lose a member of the YouTube community and in my circle we've lost about five and every one of them hurts pretty bad. Uh, Hell Ride is another one. Uh, we also lost HPR, uh, Auto, and uh, there's been a few others. This was a set of squares that I made over the summer on a water jet, huge water jet table out in Boston. I uh, just use them for setting up big things that I need an accurate square. Some of my foam, some of my materials are back here. But then these are blanks for trim wedges that I make on the CNC. So these are quarter inch thick ones and then I've got you know other sizes as we go back. All the logos are cut in, all the steps are cut in, then I hand sand them, cut them apart into the one inch blocks and sell them. Yeah, here's some foam. So this is just some, some generic, uh, here we go one inch uh, cross-link PE. There we go, we'll get technical. One inch cross-link PE, and I've cut it into 12 inch squares just to make stuff out of whatever that is. If it was, you know, the square square container down there, or uh, Izzy Swan DPT wrench foam, whatever it is, this stuff works great. I've also got, oh man, where it is? Jimmy Duresta's knuckle, duck, <laughs> knuckle duster. Um, just for fun, I, I worked on the knuckle duster uh, model for Tom to make, and uh, then I made some packaging just for fun for the knuckle duster. So I don't know if they'll actually use this or not, but the one that I have when I get mine will go into this and into a box and be kind of cool. Um, TIG welder, yeah. TIG welder that I bought, Miller Synchro Wave 200. Uh, with a water cooler under there, my MIG welder that I use constantly. I've had this thing for years. I think I bought it in the mid 90s and it has been my best welding investment ever. Plasma cutter next door to it. Uh, all fed, the plasma cutter feeds through a nozzle here, air nozzle on the front right there. Oh, sorry guys, right there. So I don't have to reach around the back to, uh, to do the air. I just pull in that line it pops on there, plasma cutter works. It's great. All my tool storage under here. So uh, yeah, evolution saw, just a airbrush toolbox there. 
my metal cutting chop saw that I don't use anymore because I have the Evolution. I have a spindle sander and then all of my TIG wire is in there. I, along with the TIG welder, I bought like 150 pounds of TIG wire uh, for almost nothing. <laughs> and then just some assorted tools. I've got my torches down in there. I know I'm getting long. And then uh, these are parts bins for projects. So these are all my twisted Sharpies uh, here. So those are all my blanks for twisted Sharpies that have already been logoed. And uh, then I have all my tools set out here. So that rubber hammer for knocking them together, uh, sledge for stamping them, and then my stamps so that I can put serial numbers on all of them. And then my block here is for inserting the Sharpie into there. And then I whack it with a rubber hammer, get it all the same. <laughs> Kind of a fun process, but love making those twisted Sharpies, love sending them out. So if anybody wants one, check out Greg's Garage KC.com and you can order one there. Dust collection over here. I do have a switch on the wall that controls an outlet that's down below. It also controls this outlet here. So my router that's in this table uh, will come on at the same time as the dust collection. So, so the router is here. I've got inserts that I made on my CNC with magnets in them for different sizes. That pops in. This sort of magnetizes right into place. It's really awesome. And I made it a nice big long table so I can do guitar necks with a downdraft over here that hooks into my dust collection. It's been a fantastic tool to have in the shop. This is my CNC that I bought from Izzy Swan. It's a digital wood carver. If you're looking for a really nice entry level CNC, this is it. Bypass the X-Carve. This thing will blow it away. The software that runs this thing is just awesome. I have a plasma or a flat screen mounted to the wall that hooks to the computer. It's just fantastic in terms of how that thing operates and works. And uh, man alive, the old English wheel back there. This is another part of the organization project. I bought all these postal totes from Uline. These were huge in getting me organized. Pay no attention to that one there. Um, huge in getting me organized. All my projects are in there, different kinds of things. So small clamps, upholstery, um, woodworking tools, guitar making stuff, electronics, all of them in there. And just been huge in keeping me organized in the shop. Hey, there's the Carmen Ghia. Yeah, you can see the smooth grills that I came up with. Then uh, sheet storage back here. So sheet metal, um, obviously in the back there, but then plastic sheets and then all of my guitar woods. So the mahoganies, the maples, the rosewoods all back in there. And then that compressor I bought when I had just gotten out of high school. So just, I think it was my first year in college. I bought the compressor and it has just been a phenomenal tool. The compressor is plumbed in. So I've got lines that come this way to a hose over there. And then obviously I've got lines that go this way and, uh, feed my bench. There's a little pet cock back there for draining and then uh, feed my bench. I'm going to really, really, really miss this stuff. So I am getting ready to move into an apartment. The apartment has a two car garage and I read through the lease agreement and there's a noise and annoyance and hazardous material warning. So I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to do in the new apartment until we find a place. I'm looking for a barn to rent somewhere uh, south of Denver. So if anybody knows of anything that might be for rent, um, let me know. I've got a little bit of money <laughs> that I can spend every month, but I do need a place to put all my tools and to do my projects. I've got a place to store them right now. I don't have a place to use them. So hopefully I'll have some videos sometime soon, maybe doing some small projects, some hand tool kind of projects so I don't make my neighbors mad. Um, but we'll eventually land and figure out where we're going to be and I'll have a new garage and I look forward to Greg's garage version two. <laughs> I think it's going to be awesome. I'm so looking forward to it and I want to thank everybody out there for tuning in over the years and for being a huge part of what's happened here at Greg's garage, inspiring me, keeping me going, all the positive comments and everything that everybody makes. You have no idea what that means when you're down here toiling away by yourself and, and you see somebody's positive influence coming through on the computer, somebody that you may not even know. Uh, it does wonders for a guy like me and keeps me pushing forward doing cool projects and experiments and making me want to share them with the rest of the world. So in my traditional sign off, 
I hope everybody does some awesome work this week in their garage or next week or this month. And in the meantime, don't let your meat loaf.